Everybody said, I don't mind way. Hallelujah. I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting on you, Lord. Oh, come on. I don't mind. Hallelujah. I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting on you, Lord. Everybody say, I don't mind. Hey, I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting on you, Lord. You may be seated. Of course, your speed is determined by what is chasing you. I'm glad you that are watching here, you're watching just for one moment. I wanted to come on here live with you so that we can pray and believe God for supernatural miracles in your life. This is one of the greatest months of your life. And it's going to be one of the greatest months of your life because you're getting ready to shift your life. How are you going to shift it? You're going to shift it through intercession. Anything that happens in your life is not just going to happen by happenstance or coincidence. But it has to happen by the divine design and plan of God. Let me share with you what I shared with the call on this morning. The word of God says in Mark, in Genesis chapter 49, verse 19. Is somebody back there on that screen? If so, let's use it. Is anybody back there? Is it? Are they? Okay. Genesis 49, 19. Thank you, Brother Pettis. Genesis 49, 19. We'll use it in a minute. Genesis 49, 19. It says, Gad, a troop shall overcome him, but he shall overcome at last. Somebody shout, a troop. A troop. Pay very close attention to that. That is a prophecy. We know what is happening in this text. In this text, a man by the name of Jacob is sitting down with all of his children. When he sits down with his children, he makes a declaration over every one of his children. He goes to Reuben. He goes to Simeon. He does to Issachar. He goes to all of the tribe. But then he gets to Gad, and he releases a prophetic word. Now, I need you all to listen to me because you do not understand why you are up under so much warfare and why you are being so attacked. You're not being attacked just because the devil hates you. You're being attacked because the devil is doing everything he can to stop you from reaching your full potential. You are not who you are called to be yet. And the devil does not see who you are, but he sees what the prophet had prophesied. Because what prophets do is we release the mind and the intention of God for your life. Look at somebody and say, a prophet has spoken over my life. It got to come to pass. So there's a prophetic word that was released by Jacob. If I had time, I would talk about that. But parents, be careful what you say over your children. Whether you are saved or unsaved, any declaration that you make over your children has weight. That's why God tells children to honor your mother and father. Because you always want to keep your parents in a posture to speak the blessing over your life. Here it is, God through Jacob speaks a word over Gad and says, this is what I see in the future. I see that a troop shall overcome him, but he will overcome at last. That's the prophecy. Pay attention. That's the prophecy. Do you have a prophecy hanging over your life? Do you have a word that has been spoken over you? The minute that prophecy was spoken, hell heard it. The minute a declaration was made over your life, hell heard it. Hell said, uh-uh, we got to stop this word from coming to pass. We got to make sure this thing don't manifest. We got to make sure this never comes to pass. Now, the word may not have been given directly to you, but it was given to your grandmother. It was given to your mother. It was given to your father. It was given to your great auntie. It was given to your great, 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 great grandmother. And the prophecy is that I'm going to save your children. I'm going to save your grandbaby. You don't even know there's a prophecy hanging over your head, but the devil do. You didn't hear what I just said. I say, you don't know there's a promise over your life, but the devil does. And because the devil knows there's a promise over your life, his job is to frustrate and hinder the prophecy from coming to pass. But somebody shout, not on my watch. Not on my watch. 
So look at what happens. He releases up. My God, y'all sound good tonight. So hear it, hear it, hear it. I just got done beating them up in Bible study. They really knowing it right now. All right. So I want you to hear me. So look at what happens. Because a prophecy is released over their life. From Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1st and 2nd Samuel, 1st and 2nd King, 1st and 2nd Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Je all through this time. This is thousands of years. But the prophecy ain't came to pass yet. Because the prophecy had a date to manifest. Now there's a prophecy hanging over Gad. What's the prophecy on Gad? Genesis 49, 19. A truth shall overcome him. But he shall overcome at last. That's the prophecy. Now here's the thing. When the word was given to Gad, Gad don't even know what Jacob talking about. And that's why you need a real prophet. Because a real prophet will speak something out of you that you don't even know in you. A real prophet will identify destiny in you that you didn't even know you had. He'll show you that you're going to work in food and you don't even like cooking. <laughs> He'll show you that you have an anointing in administration and you don't even like putting stuff together. A prophet imparts. Impartation is not giving you something. It's pulling out of you what's already in you. But it got to be identified. Somebody say, identify me, Holy Ghost. So here's the prophetic word that's been released. The prophetic word is that Gad, a troop shall overcome him, but he shall overcome at last. That's all Gad know. He don't know nothing else. But guess who know? Hell know. Hell know that somewhere there's a prophecy hanging over Gad. And the prophecy is Gad going to be overcome by a troop. But Gad going to end up overcoming the truth. That's all he know. That's all the devil know. Give me Mark chapter 5. Hold on. Mark chapter 4. Mark chapter 4, verse 35. All of a sudden, Jesus one day in Mark 4, 35, when the evening was come, Jesus said, Let's go to the what? The to the other side. Just a, just a normal day. Just a normal day. Just a normal day. We're going to hang out on the other side. What you going for? Jesus is the time where Jesus would pull away with the disciples. Time of retreat. Jesus said, let's go to the other side. As soon as he says that, look at the next verse. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as was in the ship. There were also with them other little ships, verse 37. And there arose a great storm. Hold on here. Jesus said, let's go to the other side. Evidently, something is on the other side that the storm don't want Jesus to get over there. It was a sunny day. Everything was beautiful. Wasn't no storm. They wouldn't have got on the ship if it was a storm. It was sun was out. It was easy like Sunday morning. <laughs> sun was shining. Everything looked good. But I'm trying to tell you that even the elements know your prophecy. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. I'm telling you that elements can hear. Yes. Trees can hear. Yes. Stars can hear. Yes. Storm. The minute Jesus said, let's go to the other side, there was a storm that was started in the second heaven. Yes. Why? Why would the devil deal with the storm? Because remember, He's the prince of the power of the, air. of the air. So if there's anything that he can get control of, it would be the elements. He would deal with the wind. He would deal with all this stuff. 
And the Bible says, Jesus said, let's go to the other side. Ain't no storm. But as soon as he said, let's go to the other side, a storm break out. I do want to pause for commercial break and let somebody know if there's a storm going on in your life, there must be a promise on the other side. I don't know who that was for, but that's a good place to shout. I said, I just want to pause and let you know. Turn them lights on a little bit. I said, I just want to pause and let you know that if there is a storm that just broke out last week, a storm that just broke out last month, the only reason the devil is fighting you is because he knows right on the other side, something about to break for you, something about to shift. Come on, tell three people, something about to turn for you. Stay with me. Stay with me. Watch this. I'm finna, uh, uh, we finna get happy. Finna get happy. So, the prophetic word is released. My time is almost up. The prophetic word is released. Gad, a truth shall overcome here. You shall overcome it. Prophet, what did that got to do with Mark chapter 435? Mark 435, Jesus say, let's go to the other side. He get ready to go to the other side. A storm break out. Why is a storm breaking out? What is going on? Devil, why is you bothering Jesus? Devil, why is you trying to stop Jesus from getting to the other side? The only reason the devil is mad is because the devil has knowledge by prophecy of a promise that's on the other side. I don't have time to get into it, but in the spirit realm, I told you, you have in witchcraft what you call eavesdropping spirits. These are spiritual tape recorders. These are people who will give you items, and in the spirit, they will attach a spirit to the item to record your conversation, and you wonder how they know certain stuff. You're trying to figure out how did they know that. They attach the spirit to an item to hear your conversation. I don't want to get into that. But it's called eavesdropper. But I stop up the ear of the eavesdropper tonight. Not only do you have an eavesdropper, but you have watchers. But in the name of Jesus, I blind the third eye. Hey! I feel something creeping up on me now. You got watchers, you got scanners, you got people who astral project. What's that? They know how to make their spirit leave their body and come to your house. But I command every witch. I command every warlock. I command every demonic agenda going on. In the name of Jesus, I cancel it. <laughs> Clap your hands and say, it is so. <laughs> Sit down, y'all. I'm almost done. Time almost up. I came, I, I came to make y'all want to pray. You that's watching me, I came to put a stir in you to pray. Something is about to happen in this nation in the next couple of months. And in the next couple of years, America's going to war. They're coming after your young boys. The draft is coming back. I'm preparing you for what's coming to this nation. You church that's sitting at home sleeping. You church that's sitting at home lazy. You people that aren't praying. I'm telling you, it's time for the church to get on her knees because something is conjuring in the spirit. Something is going on. But I'm not worried about it because when it get dark in the world, arise and shine. While everybody losing it, you're going to have peace. Stay with me. A storm came, right? A storm came. Why did the storm come. Why did the storm come? Wow. Jesus, all Jesus said, but let go to the other side. Uh -huh. Why the storm come? Why? And Brother Carr, what do that got to do with Genesis 49 19? Go back to Genesis 49 19. God, a truth shall overcome him. He shall overcome at last. Okay, so what? Mark 5. Mark 4. Here come a song. Mark 5. Verse 1. I'm going to shout. And they came over unto the other side of the sea into the country of the... You missed it. The devil got nervous. 
because he knew on the other side was a time sensitive prophecy he knew on the other side that there was a prophecy given by Gad and he said as long as I can keep Jesus out of Gadarene he's alright but the minute he heard Jesus was about to go to the land of the Gadarenes the devil got nervous hold on you ready you ready but why did he get nervous because there's a prophecy. The prophecy is a truth shall overcome him. Well, let, what, what's over here? What's over here? Verse 2. Verse 2, come on. And when he was coming out the ship, that met him a man out of the tombs with a man with an unclean spirit. Uh-oh. Verse 3. Who had his dwelling among the tombs. Couldn't nobody bind him. No, not with chains. Uh-oh, come on, come on. Because he had been often bound with fetters and chains. Chains had been plucked the son of him. The fetters broken in pieces. Couldn't nobody tame him. Verse 5. Come on, who up back there? Always night and day. Crying in the mountains, in the tombs. Crying. Next. Cutting himself a stone. He saw Jesus afar. He ran. Next verse. And worshipped him. Cried with a loud voice. What have I to do with you, Jesus? Son of the most high God. I adjure thee, verse 8. Don't torment me. For he said, come out of the man. Thou unclean spirit. Verse 9. He asked him, what is your name? What's your name? He said, my name is what? Legion. If you look up Legion, Legion is nothing but a truth. The reason the devil was mad is because he knew on the other side was a man who came from the tribe of Gad who was bound by truth. But the other part of the prophecy was the truth wasn't going to overtake him. He was going to overcome the truth. Okay, here's what I'm saying. The reason the devil got upset is the devil knew that on the other side of that storm was the fulfillment of the prophecy. The prophecy said that there's a man in Gad who's going to be overcome by truth. Guess what? Mark 5, Jesus say, it's time to go get him. But hold on here. Oh, I'm going to get happy. Because it wasn't really just about his deliverance. Give me verse 14. Next verse. Next verse. Next verse. Next verse. Next verse. Next verse. This is why the devil sent that storm. The troop man. The gad man. After. He got delivered, departed, and began to publish in Decapolis. Now, Decapolis is not a city. It means 10 cities. You missed it. The reason the devil got mad is because the devil knew that when this man got free, there were 10 cities of people that was about to be delivered. Can I make it personal? The reason the devil don't want your prophecy to come to pass is the devil know that when your prophecy come to pass, you're going to see the fulfillment of every promise that God ever spoke. I need you to slap three people around you and say everything you need is in your prophecy. Next time, wait. <laughs> you don't understand. And this is what I need y'all to understand. The reason the devil is fighting your prophecy so strong, the reason the enemy is fighting you so strong, is he knows that if you get free, a whole bunch of people are going to get free. He knows that when somebody see you walk in your house, walk in your car, walk in the fulfillment of your promise, your whole neighborhood about to come to Jesus. And I came tonight to pray with you against every storm that was sent by the devil to hinder your prophecy to come to pass tonight by divine authority, by the blood of the Lamb. Raise your right hand and say in the name of Jesus, every demonic storm that was sent my way to hinder my prophecy. I don't hear y'all. To hinder my prophecy. To hinder my promise. Tonight as I cut my hands and I pray, I command every
every storm sent by the devil to cease now now clap your hands and begin to pray clap your hands and begin to pray hey pray 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 clap your hands stomp your feet melebo lebanda lebekataya la talamande velelebosa jankalabo robolobobosa yendelelebelebelebelebekota la kataya lemanda loboho votilebaya brankalamande belelebosa i command every storm i command the beast that rides on the wings of the air every demonic storm every witchcraft storm every elbow shot storm sent to hinder my promise sent to hinder my promise tonight by divine authority I command that storm to cease I command peace I command peace I command peace clap your hands stomp your feet and command every storm to go command every storm to cease come on pray Y'all ain't praying. I said pray. Clap your hands. Pray. You that are watching, pray. Pray. Yay. Pray. Pray. From hell, Melebo Shata, Lemanda Lobosa, Vandelebe Kataya, Yakamo, Robolobosa, Yendelebe, Yabalabana Banana Banana Bashata, Lemandelebe Koba, Labasaya. Come on, pray, 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 pray louder, pray harder, pray louder, pray harder, pray louder, pray harder. your right hand again say in the name of Jesus every wrong prayer every false prophecy every eavesdropper every watcher every scanner that has been sent against me to hinder my prophecy from coming to pass tonight come on tonight as I clap my hands and I pray I command I don't hear you. I command. One more time. I command every demonic force sent to hinder my promise be destroyed by fire. Now, now, clap your hands and begin to pray. 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 Father, you made this church a promise. You showed us, you showed us in the realm of the spirit, a man walking in this church, writing a check for a million dollars. We command a release. We come against every liar. We come against every scandal. We come against every spirit, a sign to hinder the word from coming to pass by divine authority, by the blood of the lamb. We cancel it in the name of Jesus. May every wrong statement. May every negative word spoken against my life, every negative word spoken against this house, every negative word spoken against my finances, every negative word spoken against my children. Tonight, as I cut my hands and I pray, may every negative word be dismantled. May every wrong prayer be dismantled. May every demonic word, every wrong prayer, Every whisperer, every gossiper, every liar, every scandalizer, I command your mouth to be sealed shut. I command your tongue to cleave to the roof 
of your mouth. Whatever you have planned, I command confusion to the camp of the enemy. Clap your hands, stomp your feet, and command a release. Hey, break it. Bata, Lemanda, Leboho. Clap your hands, clap your hair, stomp your feet, and command it. Command it. You cannot have it. I will prosper. I will walk in the fulfillment of everything God spoke over my life. Satan, you are rebuked. Satan, you are rebuked. Your plan is dismantled. Your agenda is cut off. The blood, the blood, the blood, the blood. The blood, the blood, the blood of Jesus. Clap your hands. Hey, Billy. Hey, Yala. Yo. fervent prayers of the righteous that avail much I've been sent from heaven to light you up in the spirit I've been sent from heaven to command a fire to burn in your spirit I've been sent from heaven to command a release to pull you out of the place you're in raise your right hands in the name of Jesus tonight Come on, this is our last prayer. Tonight, as I clap my hands and I pray and stomp my feet, I command a release. Now, now, clap your hands and command a release. Command a release. Command a release. Command a release in your finances. Command a release of your son. Command a release of your father bound by addiction. Your son bound by drugs. Your daughter bound by depression. Command a release. Command a release. Command a release. Command a release. Release my daughter. Release my son. Release my finances. You spirit of infirmity. Get off of my mother. Get off of my grandmother. Get off of my grandfather. I command a release. You said it. You spoke it. It must come to pass. Clap your hands. Stomp your feet. Command a release. Command a release. Command a release. Command a release. Lebeshe, Lebandaloko, Brakalamansa, Zantananamosi, Ilalabo Hoshe, Ilalabo Hoshe, Ilalabo Hoshe, Yalaba Shata, Yantanamanso, Brokotolobo Kuba, Rebelebe Katanta, Tinam Tolomose, Yambe, 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 Yambi Bibi Osha, Hey, Lelebeshe, Yeleba Shatalabo. Le commande la bohosa ya bi 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 ansia yay 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 you spoke it you said it it got to come to pass i command the release of finances i command the release of resources everything that i need to fulfill my destiny everything i need to go to my next level everything i need to be who you call me to be i command the release I command a release. I command a release. Money, do you hear me? I command you to release. Demons of hell tormenting my family. Do you hear me? By divine authority, let my son go. Let my daughter go. Let my family go. Pray. 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 Command a release. Yama. Yama. Yama! Command the release of your healing. Command the release of your liberty. 
Hey, something is breaking. Something is breaking. Something is turning. Something is shifting. Something is moving. Hey! 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 Oh my, yeah, yeah, yeah. In the name of you that are watching, you need a breakthrough. You need a change. You need a shift. You need things to move for you. I'm going to tell you right now, as long as you're lazy, ain't nothing going to happen. Pray fervently. Pray till something happens. Pray till it turns. Pray till it shifts. There's a storm that's been released from hell to stop you from going to the other side. But in the name of Jesus, I prophesy tonight, you will cross over. Hey, now shout for your crossover. Shout for your crossover. Release a sound in here. Release a sound. Hey, hey. I say you're crossing over. Say you're caught. My God, I feel something. You ought to shout where you at. Because something, hey. Homer. Yeah, hey, hey, hey. Homer, I shunned thee. Heal a bush. Heal a Monday. The name of Jesus. It is so. Tonight, I know you've given all day. Tonight, we're sowing a crossover seed. You that are watching. You that are here, it's on the screen. 300 of you. Just so all you got to give us a $20 seed. 300 of you. You that are watching. You that are here. Go on the thing. Go on Cash App. Go on the website. Doesn't matter. But you're sowing that seed at dollar sign. PBCJR. $20. It's your crossover seed. Name it. Name it. Crossover seed. Name it. Erebe Kobanda Lakia. I'm sowing like crazy. I'm giving like crazy. Why are you giving so much? Because I'm about to cross over. Why are you shouting so much? Because I see myself on the other side. Why are you rejoicing? Because I see myself in another place. I see my brother free. I see my son delivered. I see my sister in the high. I feel something breaking in here. Shout for your sister. Shout for your brother. Shout for your mother. Shout for the crowd. Your son, you that are watching, don't miss this. I can give you so many testimonies that's been coming in. As we've been praying, we're praying. You got to have a target. I told you a couple of days ago last week, have a target. Don't just pray everything. You got to have a target. You got to find something that you're going after, that you're pursuing. And I'm telling you, this is the year of manifestation. Everything that's been held up from you. God's about to do it. I dare you to go run to five people and tell them get ready for the crossover. You that are watching, run to five people and tell them get ready for the crossover. Hey, Beleba, Yambi Hey, I say run and tell them get ready for the crossover. Get ready for the shift. Get ready for the turnaround. Get ready for the breakthrough. Get ready for the manifestation of whatever you prayed for. Whatever you ask God for, get ready for it. Something is about to happen. Something is about to shift. Something is about to move. I don't know about you, but I feel it. Hey, I say rejoice that you're going to bed tonight knowing you're about to cross over. Hey. Glory. I say glory. It is so. I want to say faithful. It's been 35 minutes. It's been 38 actually. I love you that are watching. You got a chance to pray with us. We pray every day at 12 o'clock noon here in Charlotte, 12 o'clock in Jacksonville, 12 o'clock there in Houston. It's praying time, church. It's not time to be cute. 
it's time to pray. The saint said, if you don't pray, you won't stay. And if you don't fast, you won't last. God endure hardness as a good soldier. You that are watching, I'll be in Dallas this weekend, Friday night. Come on out. We just ask you to register, not for, it's no price. We just want to see who else coming. Come on and register. Friday night, it's free. Saturday morning is a special service where there's a special registration for that when I'll be releasing the word of the Lord over your life. But need to meet me in Dallas. Houston. I won't be there tomorrow if you are watching Houston. I plan on coming, but it's my understanding that airports are closed and airports are backed up because of the storm. The church has power, but some of you don't have power and it's flooding. And I don't want to be insensitive to what's going on. I had every intention on being there, but I won't be there tomorrow. But we'll be in Jacksonville on Thursday and you'll get to see the service live. So you'll stay in tune with what God is doing in KCC. I don't care what nobody tell you. Ain't no better place to be in KCC. I want to challenge you. I want to challenge you to get and pray. Wherever you are, 12 o'clock, pray. Pray for one hour. Pray for two hours. You that are part of this church, meet us here at prayer. 12. Don't be sitting home looking at the Flintstones. Do they still come on? Okay. Don't be sitting home watching the Flintstones and George Jetson. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. But that's old, isn't it? <laughs> Don't be sitting home doing that. Come on. Let's get in prayer. 12 o'clock. It's getting ready to happen for you. I feel something happening. I feel something breaking. I need about 30 people that believe something. Shout right there. All of you that are watching, don't miss out on this crossover seed. Every one of you that's watching, sow that seed in faith. Believe in God for the supernatural. Nothing's going to stop you. You are more than a conqueror. This is the greatest season of your life. Get ready to cross over. I love you. You're anointed. You're favored. More grace. Hug five people and tell them I crossed over tonight. <laughs>